and I'm not there yet. Uh, by that I mean a nice clean video that shows setting up a digital capable and voice capable shortwave receiver for those folks that want to add communications to their preparedness uh, skill set but aren't going to be ham radio operators. One of the things that we are noticing is the stark difference between those who communicated and those who did not are people who practice and people who don't, or people who've taken the time to familiarize themselves with their equipment. Hey, greetings again from the road. Well, once again, I'm on the road heading to Southern Oregon, and I have with me my portable shortwave gear. Um, Anytime I'm on the road, I take my ham radio gear with me, but recently I've been adding to that kit a portable shortwave set. A couple of reasons for that. One of them is I want to always be able to receive the Amron nets, and I'll put some links down below, but they are typically held on the first and third, Wednesday and Thursday of every month. And I've really aimed at making this uh, shortwave set as small and as portable as possible, as well as flexible as possible. The reason behind that is, if it meets those criteria, I'm more likely to have it with me at all times, and most importantly, when I need it. Pretty much like your um, everyday carrier EDC. If it's small and portable, and you are carrying it with you all the time, it's gonna be helpful when you need it. Much different than carrying around a little backpack or man pack that um, is billed as your EDC, but you know what? A lot of times when you need it, it's not with you. So I've tried to aim this uh, shortwave set to be as portable as possible. Along those lines, I want to apologize for the wind and the car noise, but right now it is 0030 UTC, which is 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. And this is when the Amron nets would typically be checking in. Now I just checked their website and the net for this week has been moved to next week. You need to really get in the habit of being on air when those nets are happening so that when the time comes that you need those nets, you've been practicing, you know the frequencies, you know how to get your gear up and running, and you know the intricacies of your setup and location. Now for me, I'm always portable, and so I'll give you a little view of what I've got set up. I'm in the Cabela's parking lot in Springfield, Oregon right now, kind of off in a corner, and I've not really gotten too many weird looks yet, but uh, you never know. So in the background, you can hear, I'm listening on the 20 meter band, and you can hear some digital sounds. I'm going to turn the camera around in a little bit and let you see what I'm picking up. And then, um, you never know, there might be an Amron operator operating on the um, Amron frequency, so we'll take a look at that as well. Right now you're hearing PSK31 in the background, so we'll take a look at that. And I'll be sure to give you a, a peek at the uh, setup as well. Let me give you a quick little view of what I set up and was able to receive digital signal in less than 10 minutes after pulling into the Cabela's parking lot. Okay, the black wire coming in is my homemade shortwave antenna. The white wire is the line out from the radio to my computer and it's an, a Griffin iMic. My entire setup, including the radio, the cables, and antenna fit in those two zip bags those are basically two small zip bags from Amp3. One bag holds the radio and iMic, and the other bag is dedicated to my shortwave antenna. Looking down here, you see my laptop computer. It's running FL Digi. The top is the uh, translating screen. The bottom is the transmit screen, and down below is the waterfall. You can see some, um, I believe that's Contestia signals coming in right there. This is where the um, iMic cable comes in from the radio. And then we'll spin the camera around and I'll show you how the antenna set up. Input from the radio, Griffin iMic, 
output line USB to the computer. Well, I'm going to apologize for the ambient noise, but you guys that are trying to get your comms up and follow my channel because of the comms, hopefully you can bear with the noise and the wind. The real point of the video is uh, the portable comms with a digital capability using a shortwave radio. I've been working on this for a while. I'm not there yet. Uh, not there in terms of getting the video that I want. Uh, by that I mean a nice clean video that shows setting up a digital capable and voice capable shortwave receiver for those folks that want to add communications to their preparedness uh, skill set but aren't going to be ham radio operators. I'm almost there. Uh, just too much noise and wind today, but I do have the setup up and running and, and functional. Um, I'm outside right now. My antenna, um, my shortwave long wire antenna basically coils up on this. Um, this is a kite winder that I got from Buddy Pole, but you can pick them up anywhere. I like the Buddy Pole one only because one, they're inexpensive, and two, they're really big and robust. They're glass reinforced resin. And they work great for all sorts of things, including winding up your shortwave uh, long wire antenna. Again, I apologize for the noise. Mainly wanted to illustrate that this is very easy to do and, and, and possible anywhere, including on the road. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and just show you real quick what I did with my antenna. Okay, the antenna leaves the car goes up to that branch, goes to that branch, over to another branch, and then over to a branch in those uh, floating branches in the wind, and then it's anchored with some paracord down there on that uh, power transformer. Um, worked great. We're going to wind it up and head down the road. All right, well, there you have it. This is my shortwave long wire antenna, very portable, wound up on a little kite winding holder. Stay tuned, we're going to make a video and show you how to make your very own. If you're going to start listening on in on nets, and I think that's critical, what I do is on my iPhone in the calendar I put the net and then I put an alarm, two alarms actually, one alarm uh, the day before to cue me up, hey tomorrow is net, and then the second alarm one hour out, that gives me enough time to pull over if I'm on the road and get set up or if I'm at home to get my gear set up and turned on and tuned in so that when the net starts I'm good to, good to ready to go um, at the start of the net. 